Hi everybody. In today's video I am going to show you how to set up the datajuggler.blazer.components grid. About a week ago, datajuggler.blazer.components passed 100,000 NuGet installs, so I felt a new video was in order. If you want to see a working example, I created a new repository called the Bubble Report Web. This site will be live soon, but you can clone it now from GitHub. I will put the link in the video description. The only disappointing part of the 100,000 installs is the project has only received 8 stars. Possibly most of the users do not know how to use the components, or they don't like it. If you think it is worth the price of free, please leave a star. The first step to use datajuggler.blazer.components is to add the package via NuGet. After you add the package, there are two things you need to set up. First, in your project, open program.csharp. Add a using statement for Blazor styled like shown. Next, add a line to the web application builder. Builder.services.add Blazor styled. Blazor styled is used for dynamic CSS used by the grid. Next, we need to add a link to the data juggler.blazor.components CSS file. In the pages folder, open the file underscore hosts.cshtml. Add the following link as shown here. I will put the link in the video description to this file. The CSS file is itself worth the price, as it contains many useful attributes that make styling web components much simpler. If you want to follow along, clone the bubble report web from GitHub and create a SQL Server database named Stock Data. The link to download the Stock Data database SQL file and set up instructions are listed on the bubble report web repository. I will also add the link to the video description. The final step is to create a connection string and create an environment variable to store the connection string. To create the connection string, you might like a free open source project of mine called Connection Builder. Connection Builder is located in the tools folder of datatier.net. Connection Builder is also installed if you install the release version of datatier.net. I will also include the link to datatier.net in the video description. Run Connection Builder and type in your SQL Server name and a database name of stock data. I am using Windows Authentication, but you can use SQL Authentication if you prefer. Click the Build Connection String button. Next, click the Test and Copy button and you should see a success message and a copied icon. This will copy your connection string to your clipboard. In Windows Search, type Edit the System Environment Variables. In the box that opens, click the button for environment variables. In the system environment variables at the bottom, click the new button. Give your variable a name of bubble report connection string, all one word. Please note connection is abbreviated as CONN. Next, paste in the connection string that is on your clipboard with Ctrl plus V. At this point, you should be able to run the project. At the time of this writing, there are five grids, and we are going to create the sixth now. In the Bubble Report web project, expand the Pages folder and open index.razor. Scroll down to the bottom, and you should see a grid called Losing Industry Grid. Copy the markup for the grid, and paste it directly below the Losing Industry Grid. The grid we are going to create will contain the same columns as the Losing Industry Grid, so the only value we need to change at this point is the name. Change the name to Sector Grid, all one word. Next, open the file index.razor.cs. This file is the code behind for the index page. In the private variables region, add a line as shown for sector grid with a lower case s for the first letter. I will be using a Visual Studio package called Regionizer, but you can type this in if you do not want to install Regionizer. I will include the link to Regionizer in the video description, for anyone who might want it. To create the property with Regionizer, I simply select the line private grid sector grid, and in the Regionizer tool window, Click Create Properties. This will add the sector grid property to the properties region in alphabetical order. Next, I will select the new property sector grid and click the Create Has Property button in Regionizer, and a new property is created called Has Sector Grid. This is a simple way to test for null and one of the many reasons I use Regionizer. Now we need to register the sector grid the same way all the other grids are registered. 
In index.razor.cs, open the register method. To save a lot of typing, I am going to copy the else if line above, and then change two items to make this go faster. First in the if statement, I will change the name to sector grid, and in the line below that, I will change the name to sector grid again. This will register the sector grid with the index page. Next, open the event on after render async. Again, I will copy the code at the bottom of this event to make things faster. Copy the block that starts with if has losing industry grid. Paste this block directly below the code you just copied from. Now change the if statement to if has sector grid and change the comment to match. And now we need to change the name of the method named create rows for sector grid. And finally, change the name of the grid to sector grid for the next two lines. The very last thing we have to do is create a method to load the grid called create rows for sector grid. To make this go faster, I am going to copy the method create rows for industry losers. I will now paste this where it will belong alphabetically, since I will be changing the name to create rows for sector grid. The first thing I will change is the name of the method. Now I will copy the name and replace the region name. Change the method summary comment to load sectors. Next, change the comment load losing industries to load sectors. Change the list of objects below that to list sector and the variable name to sectors. Now change the gateway method to load sectors. On the next line, change the comment to test if the sectors exist. In the line below that, change losing industries to sectors. Next, we need to change all the grid names to sector grid. Change losing industry grid to sector grid for all the column headers. Now we need to change the comment for the for each loop. Change the data type in the for each statement from industry losing street view to sector. Now I will change the variable name to sector, with a lower case s. And now change the collection name from losing industries, to sectors. The very last thing to do, is change the item loser, to sector in the five columns in the for each loop. Now I am going to run the project, and see how it looks. It actually looks pretty good. I just noticed there is one thing I forgot to do. Open index.razor, and in the sector grid, change the header text to sectors. I also need to change the line height in the sector grid, so that 13 rows, plus the header will fit. To do this, I am going to make a copy of the CSS class grid wide, and create a grid wide too. In grid wide too, I am changing the line height to 1vh. In grid wide too, I also need to make the grid a little taller. I am changing the 278 to 310. I will do a search and replace for this, since there are three of them. Now back in index.razor, change the CSS class for the sector grid, to grid wide 2. I will now run the project one more time. In a future version, I will be adding column sorting. In the coming weeks, I will be updating the project to .NET 8. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching this video about data juggler.blazer.components grid. Please leave a star on GitHub and subscribe to my channel if you want more videos.